Yes, pre ban loco, I'm wearing a fucking rain jacket inside. I'm from the fucking UK, man. Huh? You heard of No Gallagher? Huh? You heard of Man's Not Hot? Huh? This is a UK's tradition. You just don't ever take it off. If you take it off, it's a fucking madness. The smell in here, whoo wee. But you wear it. You feel me? You just wear it. You just, uh, all the way through until tomorrow. Uh. Anyway, let me stop screaming and shouting. I'm, I'm a little bit too crunk right now. I don't know why. I don't know why, but let's relax. Let's relax. So, bankruptcy judge to DJ Envy. Turn over your docs or face possible arrest, big boy. You're going down for selling all those bad houses, you bad boy. Okay, so DJ Envy is finally going to get his comeuppance sooner rather than later. I, you know what I love about DJ Envy? It's this face. He's been trying to act so unbothered the whole time. Turning up to, like, he still turns up to work like nothing's going on. He goes to the breakfast club and just does his job like nothing's happening. Like this whole fucking real estate Rico shit isn't hanging over his head. As if he hasn't, you know, as if he's not facing, you know, double digit prison time. Like, because this is a serious fucking crime. And unfortunately for him, he didn't just scam black and brown people. He scammed some whites. He scammed a few white people who don't play about their money and they're going to take this shit to trial. You know, free Jeffrey. But hey, like, I just admire his ability to just pretend like everything's okay. He is the meme of like, you know, everything's fine and the fucking house is on fire. He is the personification of it. It's almost impressive. The guy hasn't taken one day off for like compassionate leave, be with my family. Nah, any day he can turn up and make, because I'm assuming, you know, working at radio, he gets a monthly check, right? I'm assuming in America, same like we have in the UK, full-time job, you get paid at the end of the month. He is squeezing every monthly paycheck he can get out of that job because he knows that's the last time he's going to have that job. As soon as he gets charged, that job, that job is fucking over. Suspended. And then boom, when he gets sorry, no, um, when he gets yeah, when he gets formally charged and shit, suspended. And then of course, I'm assuming when he gets convicted or whatever, maybe then of course the job will go because I have to go. Through, I'm assuming they have to go through the standard kind of procedure. Same with like Jonathan Majors, right? Um, Marvel didn't drop him until he got actually found guilty. But God damn it, DJ Envy man, like props to him for having that kind of fortitude to just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna work because I might. And to be fair though. Even though he's a piece of shit and he scams people, which I always hate people scamming, I have to give him credit for being like a good leader of the house, being a good man of the house. Like, let me just earn this money because I'm not going to be able to earn it again. So he's just earning the money while this whole thing is going on. He knows he's going to be in big trouble and he's just trying to pretend like it's not happening. Let me just turn up to work, like everything's okay, and then go from there. You have to give that guy credit a bit for putting his family first, you know? I'm just going to keep working because it's... It's, it's very unlikely that he doesn't do prison time. It's very unlikely. If he doesn't, fair enough. He got away with it. But his reputation will never recover from this, ever. Let's just go. The article says as follows. A New Jersey bankruptcy judge has issued an ultimatum to popular radio host DJ Envy in a case involving his criminally charged business associate comply with a subpoena or face possible arrest. So like all of us, like, you know when you... You know when like you get you get your bill from the fucking phone company, like I always pay it at the fucking last minute. You know, just when you're about to cut your phone. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, 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 hey. You know, <laughs> you just ignore it. Hey, 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 don't cut it off. Don't cut it off. I need that fucking. I need that fucking three G. I need that four G. I need that five G. Please, please, please. Uh, the Breakfast Club host, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, that's the most light skinned name ever, isn't it? Rashawn Casey. Um, has until the January the 8th to produce all documents required by the court appointed trustee in a bankruptcy case involving accused Ponzi schemer Caesar Pena company warehouse real estate warehouse <laughs> you swapped the O <laughs> and that's gonna be whorehouse you get me <laughs> um, DJ Envy already missed his November 28th subpoena deadline which demanded all communication and documents related to the warehouse warehouse <laughs> um, another company Pena and his wife Jennifer are also mentioned in the motion to compare Pell. Should the um, the free fail to provide full and complete responses um, to the court, 
the court will convene and hearing for the mandatory disposition, or sorry, deposition and address the appropriate sanctions, the judge wrote. Among those sanctions is arrest. So I'm guessing those docs are very damning. That's why they're stalling on giving them. They don't want to give those docs because those docs are going to create a whole new different, you know, news cycle when, when obviously they land in the hands of bloggers and news outlets and shit. That's why they don't want to give them up, I'm assuming. But those docs also might tell us some information because I remember some YouTuber, I forgot who it was. It might have been, um, I don't know who it was actually. Somebody said that they found the Caesar Pena docs. This guy here, the fat guy that's been that's being charged, and allegedly he had he he orders like, um, what do you call it, DoorDash like four times a day. Obviously he's a fat dude, but like four times a day DoorDash, four times. It's like, bro, what are you eating? Because all, from what I know, ordering delivery food, you're usually ordering food. You're not ordering snacks. But maybe in America it's different. Maybe you guys you use what's that other app to order fucking you know packs of chips and shit but usually if i'm order, if i'm using a delivery app i'm using it to buy like hot food so it's like a meal it's like dinner shit i can't imagine like ordering dinner four times on fucking uber or something or deliveroo it's fucking insane um but yeah you know gluttony and shit and I, oh and and that, that youtuber said that they saw some sort of back statement where somebody wired him money for like a property development you know whatever and there was, you could obviously see via the dates, when the money landed, he spent that money instantly on fucking DoorDash, which is obviously a crime in itself, right? If somebody gives you money for a service and then use it for something else, that's, that's I think it's technically wire fraud uh, or whatever, or something like that. I forgot what the name what the name is um, exactly, but you're not using it for its intended um, thingy. And, you know, like, bro, you don't have, you don't, you're, you're taking people's money to buy like sandwiches. Really? Really? A lawyer for the Pinas did not immediately respond to requests for a comment. An attorney for DJ Envy, who recently switched legal representation, also did not respond. Oh, by the way, um, DJ Envy's lawyer, the one that was like, you know, giving it smoke on on the on the blogs and shit, he also dropped out. By the way, so he's got some new counsel. The threats mark the latest escalation in litigation against DJ Envy against Pena, who has been charged by New Jersey with defrauding real estate investors out of millions of dollars. Prosecutors allege that Pena promise clients 20 to 45 percent return within five months of investing on his portfolio but then he allegedly engaged in a ponzi like scheme wherein he so he, com he commingled victims um investors money and used victims investors investment to pay off prior investors and cover personal expenditures which is guess what a ponzi scheme DJMB has not been charged with a crime, but as reported by Daily Beast, he is named in the lawsuits by Pena investors, some of whom say they were recruited through real estate seminars that radio hosts had promoted. I still can't figure out why, like, I would understand if he did this in his own time, kind of, it would make more sense. DJ Envy was trying to make more money. He was trying to get on a property ladder. He was trying to appear like a tycoon. He links up with this guy, does property. But I just still can't wrap my head around him deciding to bring this guy to his place of work it's wild like but i'm assuming in the in the world of scams because the, there was a time in the uk we don't people don't do it too much now because it's so risky but there was a time in the uk where people were like banging squares they would call them right squares where essentially you'd give some you know some shady character your bank card and they deposit someone else's money in, <laughs> in your account and usually they wouldn't tell you how much it was it'd always be like way more than they said it would be so if they said they're gonna give you 20 they'll try and put in 100 grand into your account now if you're a regular person and you've never made a hundred grand in your life, right? <laughs> Getting a hundred grand in your account is obviously going to alert the bank, right? And obviously they're going to fucking cancel your card, whatever it may be. Anyways, those guys will just recruit people who are like down and out, maybe struggling with money, maybe had a kid, whatever, mate. But I can't imagine a scenario where somebody would do a credit card scam like that and then recommend that person to the people that they work with or take that person to their workplace. And bring them in the office like, hey, this is my friend Daryl. Everyone say hi to Daryl. Well, go on. Hi, Daryl. Yeah, so um, Daryl helped me out with some Christmas shopping. Because obviously, you know, me and the kids, we're alone now. So, it, like, n why would you do that? Like, that's insane. So him bringing that guy to his place of work still blows my mind. Blows my fucking mind that he brought him on the fucking breakfast club and gave him that platform is fucking wild bro absolutely wild but hey what can you do